What you're about to see is a matter of human record. Explain it, we cannot. Disprove it, we cannot. We simply invite you to explore with us the amazing world of the unknown, to take that one step beyond. Dunkirk, France, June 4th, 1940. The last pitiful remnants of the British Expeditionary Force rescued only by heroic action. France crumbling. Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, overrun. Germany everywhere victorious. And England, her army shattered, her arms and material captured, stood alone, virtually defenseless, under the merciless attack of the mighty Luftwaffe, and awaited the coming invasion. And now it has come to us. Stand alone in the breach and face the worst that the tyrant's might and enmity can do. Should the invader come to Britain, we shall defend every village, every town, and every city. Winston Churchill, Britain's most potent wartime weapon. In that dark time after Dunkirk, he rallied his people from despair and defeat. They fought with anything and everything, even the fantastic weapon of psychic power. Inside this command post of Britain's Home Guard on the north coast in 1940 was a mild and most unmilitary fellow who took that incredible one step beyond. But see for yourself. So bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. About time somebody give them ruddy Nazis what for. Yeah. Churchill's a real old British bulldog himself. No doubt of it. He's the leader we've been needing right along. I'll tell if you we what, had All right, you men. No, finish, if... finish up with miss. You have to post guards before dark. Their finest hour. Well, it really gives you a sort of lift, doesn't it, Mr. Blakely? It does, Billy. It really gives one hope. Our side will win in the end. Yes, but do you really think we will? I don't know. I suppose that depends on us, doesn't it? The blooming Nazis don't kill me. This food will. He ever told you you could cook, eh? Oh. Fine one to choose. Farmer probably never cooked a meal in his life. Do you think hauling coal in a dray qualifies you for any better? Oh, what a crew. Ruddy farmers, bank teller, overage chemist, headmaster of a blooming girls' school, uh, yeah, vicar and greengrocer, all bossed by a one-armed pensioner. He lost that arm in the First World War. And got a DSC doing it. Oh, Blakely. I met Ethel when I was in town today. She said to take care that you wear that scarf against the night air. <laughs> How did she look? Oh, same as ever, don't you worry. <laughs> you know, I've never seen anything like it. A body would think you were newlyweds instead of going on your 20th. Yes, Ethel and I see each other. <laughs> oh, she said to tell you that the, um, the red platter dropped 28 fry. <laughs> Whatever that means. Sounds like Russian code. Maybe Blakely's in cahoots with the ruddy reds. A red platter is a small tropical fish. Very beautiful. One of mine just had 28 babies. 28? Oh, glad my missus can't do that. <laughs> Quite a sight they are. No bigger than the head of a pin. Lucky, you yeah. take the outpost. You and Carl. What? Him? Do I have to have him for a partner? Oh, why not? Well, I just wouldn't feel safe, that's all, with only a kid to protect me back. Look, Lucky, we're all the same here. All doing our bit as best we can. Carl's done well so far. Well, he's got no nerve. Anybody can see that. If he had, he'd be in the services at his age. Quite obviously, he was turned down by the services. Well, that's what I mean. Why? That's none of your business. Now, Lockie, it's time you understood we're under <coughs> military discipline here. But this is war, and you'll have to take my orders. Look here. I'll take Cliffy's place on the cliff ward. 
I was going to put you on telephone watch tonight, Herb. You need rest. We all do, don't we? I doubt if there's a man here who's had ten hours sleep in the past week. Carl and I can spell each other. All right, that's how you want it. If it's all right with Carl and Lockie. All right. You know the schedule of the watch and the signals. Now, no lights and no smoking from now on. Harrison. Yes. You and Charlie get to the lighthouse. All right. Bill, you take the near bunker. going to be a dark night. <laughs> Just the kind they choose. Do you really think we have to fear them this far north? Surely they'll hit straight across the channel at Kent and Essex. Our job is to watch for raiders, off subs and the like. They'll probably try to infiltrate all along the coast. A nice, quiet little inlet like ours is made to order for them. I hope they don't come tonight. Likely they'll find us all asleep. <laughs> Any man caught sleeping at his post will face court martial. We're not the regular army, remember, Tim? We've all of us been on the constant alert for more than three weeks. And every man's ready to drop. And every man's doing his duty. I appreciate that. Maybe as time goes on, we'll all toughen up, huh? <laughs> Herb, you better take a gun with you out there. Prawn is 22 or the Vickers bird gun. Wouldn't know how to use it anyway. We're only there to sign a warning. They must have a weapon of some kind. Take a sword off oar or a pitchfork. All right. I'll take a pitchfork. And here's your sword off oar. Herbert. Would you like me to pray with you? Thanks, no, bigger. Makes me uncomfortable asking favors of heaven. Besides, it's not us I fear for, it's them back in town. My wife, Ethel, your wife, and all the others. But they'd have to land here first. I mean the bombers. <laughs> Why would they bomb our little town? It has nothing of military importance. What reason? Reason enough for the Nazis. Remember Rotterdam? Just to show they can do it. Just to put the fear of God in us. Don't think of it. It won't happen here. They'll be all right. Very well, Vigor. You want to pray? Pray for them. War depends upon Lucky or Charlie or me. God help us. We're really at the bottom of the barrel. Oh, I wouldn't say that entirely. I'll wager Lucky can still put up quite a scrap, even with his crippled leg. Of course, I'll admit, as a warrior, I'm an excellent greengrocer, but well. <laughs> Perhaps our services won't be needed after all. Yes, but supposing they come, what are we going to do without guns to go around? They'll have guns, you know. Hmm? Perhaps we can take them away. Hmm. We can do the best we can, that's the straight of it. Mr. Blakely, Lockie was right, you know. I am a coward. Because you're frightened? Yeah. But everybody is, even lucky. Are you? Certainly. Now, cut up and catch a nap. Yes, but aren't you tired? I don't go to sleep now, or I shan't wake up till morning. So, I'll take the first watch while you catch 40 winks, and then you can have the second. Now, don't worry, I shall wake you. Mm. 
Mr. Blakely, the reason why I couldn't join the service, I've got bad lungs. Go to sleep. What a ruddy boar. Signal the alarm.
seems you were wrong, Herbert. It was we who needed the prayers. How do you feel? Oh, it's nothing serious. I'll be back on my post tonight. Oh. The attack started to go for 17 hours. It lasted approximately seven minutes. Yes, I'm sure. We got them all. Five men and an officer. Ours? Well, I suppose every man's got a scratch or two. Only three, seriously. I'm sending them into hospital. Go ahead, Charlie. Yes, sir. Dead? Only one. Who? Lucky. What is it, Herb? It was my fault, Tim. Yours? Why? I was late giving the alarm. I was asleep. If that were true, you'd be dead. We got the alarm, all right. And from you. I woke up. Just at the last moment. And you know what woke me? A dream. A dream? A dream that saved my life. Saved all our lives, probably. Tim, they... On the town. In your dream? Yeah. I saw Ethel sleeping. And the eye bombers overhead. Didn't you hear them? No. Besides, why would they bomb us here? They must have passed over on their way to London. Are you sure? You didn't hear bombs falling in town over there. How could we with all the noise here? I've got to go see. Maybe you think I'm balmy but you've got to give me time off today to go in. You see, I saw Ethel and my house and the bomb falling. Herb, it was only a dream. I got to know. All right. It's Colonel Marlowe here. Can you tell me, did they bomb you in there just now? I see. Thank you. You can ride in with the truck. Thanks. Herbert. Good luck. Thanks.
Officially, she's still listed as missing. <laughs> about Ethel, Herb? <laughs> Rotten luck. What do you want to do? Let's go back. It's my place, isn't it? So worried. I know it's against regulations, but I just had to come. I thought you were dead. I was dead. I dreamed some Nazis landed here and were going to attack you, and no one saw them coming. I screamed. It was so terrible, it saved my life. I woke up just as the planes were overhead, and I had just enough time to grab some clothes and run into the basement. I had a dream, too. What in the world are you doing with my shoe? Want to hear my dream, Ethel? I tried so hard to call you. I tried so hard to warn you. I wanted so badly for you to hear me. I think perhaps I did, Ethel. I think perhaps I did. A recorded case of the double dream. When a man and his wife met for a life-saving moment in the world outside the five senses, Sometimes people in love have been known to speak beyond time and space. To whom it happened, we know. Where it happened, we know. How or why it happened. In a moment, something about our next meeting in the unknown world. Now, as to next week, ballet slippers for a very young ballerina, a lovely child who one afternoon long ago danced into the world of the unknown and in one shattering moment had a terrifying look into the future. Would she or could she years later once more dance one step beyond?